All right, so this is uh, just Kai, just Kai Agro. Um, basically, this is an archetype that's very similar to just Kai Control, and that we've got bolts and helixes and paths and snapcaster mages. And we've also got a little bit of extra pressure here. So this build has um, some copies of Spellqueller, Bendillion Click, and a couple of Geist. Um, Geist is what I would often describe as like a two or ten card in modern in matchups where. Your, in matchups where your opponent's not blocking it, this card kills them very quickly because it attacks for six a turn, starting on the fourth turn. Um, in matchups where your opponents have creatures, this card tends to leave a lot to be desired because it is just a 2-2. Hey, King, thanks for dropping in. I appreciate the support. One thing that's kind of neat um, is that Tefri Time Levers, Revelers seem some play in Modern off and on. One of the neat interactions between Tefri Static Ability and Spell Queller is that if you have a Tefri in play, and your spell queller dies or leaves the battlefield, your opponent it doesn't get to recast their spell that's underneath it because they'd technically be casting the spell while the spell queller trigger is still on the stack, which means that which doesn't isn't allowed under Tefri Time Relevers ability. So these cards directly synergize together with Tefri's downtick as well, because you can spell queller something and then play Tefri and bounce your spell queller with the Tefri and then have your spell queller back. Yeah, exactly. And also, we've got a Miser Restoration Angel in here, so you can also um, resto your spell caller while it has a spell under it if you have Tefri out and they don't get to recast the other one, which is kind of neat. We've got uh, Smattering, uh, Various Graveyard Hate, and other reasonable sideboard cards. We've got a couple of Surgicals, a couple of Rest in Peace, and an Ashiok, a Dream Render, which is slower Graveyard Hate, but like is also relevant against things like Court of Calling and Titan Shift, for example. couple people mentioned Tron. Yeah, this archetype definitely doesn't have the greatest Tron matchup. We've got like an extra counter spell and like some Sony silences and stuff, but definitely not a freebie by any means. This game's fine. We're hoping that we're playing a matchup where these lightning bolts have text. Um, the nice side about playing light nice thing about playing lightning bolt is your removal is that when it doesn't have text, um, it still gets to go to their dome. Turn one hex drinker probably means these bolts are gonna be reasonably live. Just go ahead and kill this now in case shenanigans happens. If they're playing something like Green Stompy, for instance, I would like to get this out of the way so they don't like have a production spell for it. All right, Opt. Opt is not a bad pickup. As far as like non-land draws are concerned, this gives us another look at a third land tier down the line, which is nice. Morning, Super. Go ahead and just preserve my health total here. Just go ahead and kill this. We'd really like to draw the third land naturally since I have so many three drops in my hand. Mana Tither. Okay. All right. All right. I've been I've been mana tithered. If we hit a land, we're gonna snap bolt this untapped land. Perfect. Hey, Mick, thanks. I appreciate it. Am I snap bolting this? I'm not, actually. Tefri Time Raveler is actually, like, pretty good against this deck. And notably, level up um, is sorcery speed. Yeah, I'm in theory playing Naya Feather this weekend. Uh, assuming it gets here in time. It's supposed to be supposed to be delivered yesterday and wasn't here, so hopefully it'll be here before this afternoon. Isn't it weird playing Spreading Season and Aggro deck? Instead of me telling you you're wrong, can you tell me why you're right? Why Why is playing a disruptive card that draws a card um, bad in an aggro deck? Opponent, opponent decides they've seen enough. Um, I don't know exactly what they're doing. Smells like, like a small creature deck from the couple of things that we saw there. I'm going to bring in Detention Sphere, Engineered Explosives, Kitchen Finks. This is probably a matchup that's pretty reasonable for our archetype. We've got a lot of really good removal. It's a matchup where Geist of St. Trap leaves a lot to be desired because if my opponent has things like Hex Drinker, they probably have more other small things that are blocking. Yeah, I'm just going to bring in, going to bring in extra removal spells in the Kitchen Finks, basically. Uh, I guess Spreading Seas isn't stellar. Their mana, they looked like they were just, uh, they could have a third color hiding, but... I'm going to board in Tefri because he's sustained card advantage at the top end. I guess we'll leave one spreading season. 
It does it does draw a card. Like the floor on this high is card is relatively high because it draws a card when it comes into play. Thanks, man. Yeah, it should be it should be a good weekend. The sand is more than good. Uh, it's great. No, I think the Naya Feather deck's terrible. That's why I'm taking it to a tournament for the entire weekend. I think the standard format has like a dozen different decks in it, all of which are mediocre in different ways and fine in other ways. They are playing a third color. It looks like an Abzan deck. They were just missing, just missing a color last game. It's possible. Possible Grim Lava Mancer is not as good as I suspected it might have been from the first game. If they're a more mid rangey deck. This tells them the card I drew for the turn, but I think I'd like to just get my tap land down while the getting is good. Choke. That's a good one to know about. Really, really glad I drew Celestial Colonnade now. Celestial Colonnade is notably a blue source that is not an island, so this card does not impact it. So... This will be a Lotus Petal that takes a land drop, basically. This Flooded Strand will grab a Sacred Foundry for us. Your shiny is Lucky Coin. Yeah, the... Uh... I almost, I almost feel like this current standard format is very similar to modern in that it's a good example of that a lot of different decks being playable doesn't necessarily mean the quality of gameplay is good. I think it was uh, PV or one of the people on the Pro Points podcast that talked about how even though there were a lot of decks in this format that were that were very playable and competitive, they felt like um, what's for them searching for. They felt like the gameplay was kind of mediocre, like it was too too slanted towards being on the play being too good and other things like that. I'm kind of kind of inclined to agree with those sentiments. So with. A path to exile for one of these goifs and six points of burn in my hand. This resto is actually going to close out pretty quickly. The field of rune is actually really good here for them because it uh, it takes me off this celestial colonnade, huh? Guess, I guess I get to get a one-time use island with it. Let's see if they have a removal spell for this or not. Have a good one, King. Everything should be up on YouTube tomorrow by the time you're up. Siege Rhino. Yikes. How about how about a lightning helix of my own? I mean again, like just because there's a deck like Bridgevine that's very likely the best deck in the format doesn't mean that like everybody's playing that archetype. Modern Modern's a format where people are frequently just playing whatever pet deck they really love playing at any given point. So here's the question. Do I do I want to snap path this Tarmogoyf? Or is that too conservative? And do I want to snap bolt them and try and kill them next turn? I think I think I want to just snap bolt them. 
Mm. I'm gonna risk it for the biscuit. Well, I don't really want to snap Helix because this island is one time use. They do, they do have things like Kaya's Guile I have to worry about here. Like, for instance, they have six mana. If they entwine a Kaya's Guile in response to this, I'm actually just, like, dead, right? Because it exiles, it exiles my graveyard, it gains them four, and it kills my Restoration Angel. But I was, I was dead to this regardless of when I went to play the Snapcaster Mage, whether I wanted the path or not. So, I can't really play around that. And actually now here, here are the chokes kind of getting me. If they, um, if I'd have had another red source here, or if I'd have tapped slightly differently, I could have, um, I could have flashed back this bolt. Yeah, right? Like, what year is it? So, I had a lot of live draws there. We still have live draws for next turn. I have this path to not die this turn. My opponent, my opponent gave us extra outs by not entwining the Kaya's Guile. I think that was kind of loose on their part. Bolt snap helix, good from here. Dead uh, siege right now. I brought in spyglass too. I guess that makes a lot of sense. I have uh. Three mana, three mana Tefri buys me a turn. Path to Exile buys me some time. They name three mana Tefri, that makes sense. Attack with this to start. Morning, Anner. Alright, I'm not dead yet. I'm not dead yet. I'm real. I'm really very surprised they haven't aggressively field of ruined me. Well, Manatite, Manatite with Stone Rain there takes me off this island permanently. They are technically dead on board here, and even if they have a blocker or, or kill the Snapcaster Mage, I get to uh, I get to draw to burn spells next turn. Yeah, I really, I really feel like if they would have just entwined this Kaya's Guile, they probably would have won that game. I feel like if they would have entwined the Kaya's Guile for all four modes, they'd have won there. Not sure I'd have beaten four more points of life. I guess I guess I did deal with all of their threats at the end, so like maybe I could have I could have pushed through there, but It's interesting that they're playing Sorcerer's Spyglass. 
I wonder, I wonder if getting to peek at their hand is really worth losing the mana efficiency versus Pithing Needle in this format. I feel like a lot of the time, you kind of know what types of cards your opponents is playing that you're going to want to be shutting off with an effect of, of that nature. Also playing like a Spyglass or Pithing Needle style effect in your deck that can play Maelstrom Pulse and Assassin's Trophy seems a little bit loose. Wouldn't, wouldn't you just rather like play a card that like destroys their thing rather than shutting it off with giving them the option to kill their kill your thing and get it back? Scale of one to dead. Where's this Glistener Elf at? Ooh, Time Raveler. Time Raveler is probably pretty good in this matchup, right? And again, this is like, we played Infect the other day, and we talked about how Infect is good against a lot of the good decks in Modern, but it's rancid against a lot of these pet decks that other people like to play. And this is this is a great example of, like, Jeskai devours Infect. Just gobble, gobble, gobble. Um, huh. I think I want to save this Spreading Seas for an Inkbloth Nexus, although the Pendlehaven is like kind of appealing. Just going to go ahead and path the Spellskate now so they can't protect it. We'll go ahead and check out some of our options here at end of turn. Yep. Definitely looking for removal spells. Like that one. Oh, that's good too. Is that one is that one good? Maybe maybe we do want a spreading seas, the Pendlehaven. Maybe maybe we do want a spreading seas, the Pendlehaven. Oh, you know what? This is a small mistake on my part. I should have cast this off of the steam vent, so that way I could theoretically fetch a tap shock land here. Not super likely to matter because they're playing Infect and they don't have a Noble Hierarch in play. So my health total is like kind of a free roll, but could could definitely be relevant. Was the line Seas plus Path? No, because they could like have a protection spell and untap and kill me. Percip. Remember, their Infect has, has uh, green cards that give their creature protection from things. If you can avoid it, never interact with the infect creature inside of combat. So if they if they just attack here, I'm gonna just take take the hit if they don't if they don't try and pump for lethal. So I'm not I'm not interacting with this unless they try to make it lethal. Well, I'm not interacting with it inside of combat. Because like if they have say, let's say I go to Path to Exile this Blighted Agent and they have Vines the Vast, would I just die? Because it gives it hexproof and plus four plus four. Now at the end of turn. I'm going to go ahead and Path to Exile this. Because this means that my opponent needs two pieces of protection. They need to be able to protect it from this Path to Exile. And they need to be able to protect it from the Grim Lava Mancer activation when I untap. Which is super relevant. You look at that. They had a Vines of the Vastwood. So I'd have died if I'd have tried the Path inside of combat. Huh. I think I'm supposed to start here. Mutagenic growth. Huh. So they're gonna have they're gonna have draws that kill me kill me next turn no matter what happened so the goal the goal here per sip was to was to try and put myself in a position where i'm not dead to anything next turn sure but there's there's an ink moth nexus right here so like they have they have a one one they have a one one infector next turn regardless and they have plenty of mana so like paying a mana to activate this is basically irrelevant I can't, I can't really kill Ink Moth next turn. So, like, think about... They have a Pendlehaven, too. So, this is why people 
fuck up against Infect a lot because they just don't understand what's going on so they don't take the time to think. So, like, if, let's say, I play Tefri and bounce this and leave up Grim Lava Manster activation and my opponent draws a plus four, plus four spell next turn, they would activate this and pump it and then I go to shoot it and then they Pendlehaven it in response, making my Grim Lava Manster irrelevant. So because they have this Munich Earth, my goal in just activating this here as opposed to playing this was because I wanted to ideally set up a situation in which my opponent has no draws next turn that kill me. So now that they had the mutagenic growth, I don't have the option to, to, to have that choice, basically. So I'm gonna play I'm gonna play Time Raveler and bounce this. I just have to hope they don't draw something that kills me with the sink moth. So, am I dead? We're dead to, we're dead to mutagenic growth, we're dead to scale up, we're dead to, dead to any plus two or more. Because we're at six. Yep. Welcome to modern, enjoy your state. Bring in the extra one of that. Bring in this. Um... Geist seems pretty mediocre here. I think Spell Quellers and Snapcasters and Friends are more than enough to close out the game with. You know, we don't have a ton of cards in our sideboard for this, a matchup like this because, like I said, this matchup like pretty reasonable for us on average. Got a little bit, little bit unfortunate there to end up dead. Opponent had, opponent had triple threat and a good mix of protection spells. The Infect deck's very good when it draws the right mix of everything. That's true. That's true. Both players had four lands in play. It was a really long game of modern. I think I'm going to go ahead and mulligan this. I, uh, I have the opt, but like the question you always want to ask yourself when you're looking at a hand like this and deciding whether or not you want to mulligan is like, what's the payoff? So like, even if I hit a land drop with this opt or my draw steps, like, this hand's actually not very good in the matchup, right? Like, I don't have Grim Lava Mancer. I don't have any of my Path Tags. I don't have Lightning Bolts. Like, two mana. Two mana removal is kind of inefficient here. So not not only does that hand need to draw lands, but it also needs to draw good spells. So that means it needs, needs to do too much. And this hand is very reasonable. Has lands in it, which means it only needs spells. Lead on Arid Mesa here for Steam Vents. Have a great weekend and good luck. Can't wait for my sword. What do you think of upgrading modern decks Burn and Tron with new cards from Horizons? Or can I wait? I think Burn, uh, you should get three or four of the red-white lands ASAP for Burn. I don't know that Horizons really has cards for Tron in it offhand. And this is So actually, one of the things that's really interesting, and I, I talked about this around the time, but that first mulligan that I took there is a good example of the types of percentage points you gain when you know what your opponent is playing in modern. And fair interactive decks like what I'm playing tend to be much better when you know what your opponent is doing, which is why um, the data from the Mythic Championship 2 that was modern with the London mulligan really isn't particularly good data to be looking at to determine whether or not... Um, fair decks are good or bad in modern with the London Mulligan compared to unfair decks because the fair decks at the last Mythic Championship had the added advantage of decklist being public and decklist being public greatly it, it, decklist being public improves fair decks more than it improves unfair decks because unfair decks are just like looking for their hand to go 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 whereas fair decks are looking for specific things in specific matchups so they get added bonus during while taking mulligans because they have information that they won't have in like a normal tournament you ever put malira into play against infect and watch them realize they're now playing a bunch of one ones and giant crows the best part is when you explain the malira ink moth interaction to people a lot of a lot of i remember that one back in the day because i played kiki cord with with malira and inside board frequently so it's like oh you are you are not going to be happy they have their own three mana tefri they do I'm going to go ahead and snap opt in response here. I 
I feel like Tefri's, Tefri's tagline could just be like, um, magic's easier when your opponent's playing Hearthstone. It's like something cheeky like that. So, the way Modern works is that Modern is an incredibly diverse format where you can't play narrow cards like Solemnity and not be at an extreme disadvantage in a variety of other matchups. So you can't, you can't generally speaking, afford to play cards in Modern that are only good in single matchups. So like if... If your sideboard slot is only good in one matchup, that's probably that's probably not not a card worth playing. We're hoping they don't have mutagenic growth here, which means they do. Yikes! It's also good against hardened scales. It's okay against hardened scales. Three three mana is really slow in that matchup. Like a lot of a lot of times, hardened skills gets on the board before that 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 effect would be good against them. Yeah, I agree. Tefri Tefri is a is three mana Tefri is a type of card design that they had largely been moving away from, which I think was a good thing. And the reintroduction of this style of card to Magic, I don't think is something that's healthy or good for the game. It. The magic magic is more fun when you get to do cool things as opposed to when you remove your opponent's ability to do cool things. That's basically the the TLDR. So like giving giving yourself cool bonuses is better, generally speaking, from a game design perspective than giving your opponent rude penalties. I think at this point, I'm just casting Spreading Seas to draw a card. So I need to try and find removal for this Bladed Agent before it kills me. Sure, I didn't say there weren't people that don't like playing Prison Decks, Nivik. I'm saying from a game design perspective, it is generally worse because it leaves people unhappy. It leaves more people unhappy than just one person getting cool bonuses. <clears throat> Hey, David, thank you for the five months of support. I appreciate you shipping your Prime back this way again. Hope you're having a fantastic uh, start to your weekend. Or Thursday. Today's, today's like the start to my weekend, so. Alright, we're going to try and snap Helix the Splated Agent here. They don't have a protection spell here. We're in a pretty good spot. If they do have a protection spell, we could be dead next turn. Yay! The source, the sorcery speed, the instant speed scale up to protect my thing. Thanks, Tefri. Thanks, Tefri. That was a good example there of why I use the lightning helix on my turn as opposed to waiting for their turn. Because if I wait till their turn, that scale up kills me. Thanks for the 28 months, GVL. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. That's true. We also just can't because of Tefri. I'll send one of these at them and two of these here. If they want to throw away both of these to protect their Tefri, I'm okay with that. Otherwise, I'd like to get a hit in on them. Great. Removal spell, please. The good, the kind of good news is, is that um, I'd love to draw a bolt or a path here so I can Queller plus removal. The kind of good news is that I can spell Queller a potentially lethal spell next turn, so that's nice. Because they need, they need Dub's lethal spell. So they need another pump spell here. And if they have it, I'm dead because I have nothing, obviously. But if they don't have it, we 
Might be able to push lethal next turn. That's true, become events. A lot of the lists have cut become events for scale up, which, like I said when we played Infinite Liberty, I'm not I'm not certain that feels correct. Alright, we're going to nine. We can put them to three, so bolt this lethal. Removal spell, please. Tefri, please. Bye, Felicia. Yay! We did it. We did it. We did it. Hurrah! Crunch, 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 crunch. Down to one. All right, on the scoreboard. Let's it was razor thin after my claim of this matchup's pretty good for us. Three mana, three mana Jeffrey's kind of a beating. Seems like good technology in the work type. Do I want these D spheres? This is a card I want in my deck. Is this better than is this better than Vito? I think I just want more cards that play to the board. This is a little clunky, but it's kind of hard to pass up all three colors of mana, Boltelix. Especially when we have double removal spell like this in our opener, we definitely want to just kill this Noble Hierarch on one, just so they don't get ahead on mana. I already have cards for the for the Teamer Delver deck waterfalls. So since they're stumbling here, I'm actually just gonna leave this in play. I'm just gonna send it back with this guy. Bye, Felicia. What if we what if we run it back? If we what if we run it back? Alright, this one, this one's over. Call this call this one a wrap. Yay! Magic! Yay! Where's the buy Felicia thing from? Some terrible movie from the early 2000s. Time walk, time walk, draw cards. Like, yep. And you send you back to the Stone Age. Pick it. Pick it up. Where is X Habit of Jeff's from? Answer some horrible piece of pop culture from the early 2000s. <laughs> Ain't that the truth, Burgle? Listen, Burgle, I was ridiculed as a teenager for not understanding enough pop culture references. 
So once I once I learned them, they had to stick with me, okay? Is there a good reason to play Jeskai over Blue White? I don't think there's any good reason to play Blue White. So like I listen, here's here's Jeff's golden rule of modern. If you're not using your graveyard, if you're not casting Faithless Looting or Ancient Stirrings, just follow your heart, because you're not trying to win anyways. Don't don't let me or anybody else tell you that your pet deck isn't beautiful, okay? Optimus dies. Thank you for the five-month resub. I appreciate that. Welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. If you're, if, you're not, if you're not choosing to register one of the busted cards in this format, just do whatever you want. Who cares? When it's playing Slivers, we have uh, uh, Doomblade, Doomblade, Snap, Doomblade. So that's nice. Counter it unless they pay two. Oh, no. Oh, no. Our whole, our whole Doomblade, our whole Doomblade Enterprise is falling down around us. I think I actually, I think I actually fetch a tapped land now because I want to... I want to path this on three. Because if I path this, I can't kill this to four. Never, never forget, chat. The pride, the pride cometh before the fall. I just seek their meat hooks into you. They could play a variety of cards on three that would let the Diffusion Sliver attack past the Snapcaster Mage, so I don't think that line's very good. We're so dead. Oh, no! Oh, no! They stack, chat! Why do they stack? Why do they stack? We're actually just dead to Diffusion Slivers. This is so terrible. This is so terrible. Death Sea, thanks for the raid. Hope you're having a good one. We're currently we're currently dying to slivers because we chose to register an interactive tech in modern. <laughs> oh slivers. Maybe they'll forget their trigger, right? Oh no, the slivers are swole. They're so swole, chat. Why are they so swole? Nothing, nothing embodies the Geist of St. Traft modern experience quite like cast Geist of St. Traft on three, concede on turn four. Nothing, nothing quite embodies what you get into registering Geist of St. Traft in Modern quite, quite like that. Just like a big old, big old cup of nope. Where, where am I, where am I Terminus at? Hey, Gittle. Thank you for the very generous tier three resub. I hope your Thursday is finding you well. Welcome, welcome. Ooh. All right, take two. Outside of Diffusion Sliver, this matchup should be pretty okay for us. They are a creature deck, and our deck is full of removal spells. But sometimes, sometimes you get double diffusion slivered when you're on the draw and you die. Like that, that whole game was just play versus the draw, right? Like if I'm if I'm on the play, they play diffusion sliver on two, and I get to bolt it in response, or bolt it on my third turn, and they never get to stack up with the other one. But 
Those are those are the types of decks people love to play in modern Burgle. People people love to play the decks that get run over. Fair fair decks with a little bit of interaction in them. These are these are the types of decks people desperately want to be good. And thankfully, other people play things like slivers and infects. So, like, you still get to win some games with them. We were if we were in for like five matches of Bridgevine and Dredge, like we wouldn't have a chance. But thankfully, modern's a format where people constantly register decks that aren't actually very good. God, God bless them. I wonder if I'm supposed to like. So I left one. I left one copy of uh, Spreading Seas in my deck because I didn't really have anything else that good to bring in. I wonder if I'm supposed to bring in one Stony Silence for their Aether Vials. I could I could see that. Snap, snapping Grim Boy fighting for food here a little bit, which is awkward. Oh, that's true. Yeah, there's the new the the blue white humans deck we're gonna play next is the the diffusion sliver in it. Flying and haste. Oh god, their hooks their hooks are coming for us, chat. Not right. The kids just aren't right. Thank you for the four months. I appreciate that. Welcome, welcome, welcome back. Thanks for keeping me around. Ooh. We do, what if we do this? Go. Uh, I mean, I do have this spell caller in my hand, which is technically not a counter spell, but it's like, it's like counter spell adjacent, right? Like when you're walking, when you're walking down the counter spell aisle in the grocery store, it's like, here's your mana leaks and your spell callers are like right next to them. Did a deck like this go 5-0 in League recently? Probably. Everything, lots of, lots of things can 5-0 in modern. Modern, modern's a format of people following their hearts. Get in, get in for one. Get him. If they don't play into this spell queller this turn, I'm probably gonna click my own spell queller out of my hand to try and draw into some more removal. If they don't, if they don't play into it this turn, they're likely not playing into it for the rest of the game. I guess, I guess D Sphere kind of changes that dynamic, huh? Opponents had enough. All right, excellent. Yeah, I think I'm actually gonna. Oh, they have Mutavault. That probably means spreading seas is fine. Do I want to cut some of these spell quellers? I'm gonna trim a spell queller and bring in a Stony Silence. I mean, having one card that turns off four Aether Vials sounds good. I'm going to keep this. I'm going to die to a diffusion sliver, but I'm going to die with a bunch of removal in my hand. That's going to be great. It's fine. We'll draw a fetch land on turn one. Everything's going to be wonderful. I've got three castable spells, chat. What could possibly go wrong? It would be ideal if this was an untapped blue red source here. In fact, maybe 
Look at that. Never, never didn't have it. Skilled game. Better player always wins. Magic, magic, magic. It's very possible these should just be fast lands. As opposed to the kind of slow lands we have now. So I'm going to shock in this Hollowed Fountain on two. And the reason for this is bluff value on turn three. I'd like to... I'd like to be able to pass with three mana up on three, having it be less obvious that I have a three mana spell to play because they saw spell queller and click. So like if I shock in my land on three, it's like abundantly clear what I'm doing. <laughs> We're actually not going to spreading seize them because that, uh, that might actually fix their mana and let them cast their spells. <laughs> Not, not clicking them. They're stumbling on land drops. I don't really care what's going on in their hand. So you, can, you can move to hand size. I'm going to dig for more removal spells over here. There's probably a chance they don't have that many more basics. I really don't want to risk giving them an island or a forest, though. So like if I if I knew their deck list and they knew they didn't have their basic, we'd like snap the field, but without without knowing, I don't think I want to risk unlocking their hand. We're this far ahead. Look at that. Burgle made fun of our fair interactive deck, and now we are 3-0. Undefeated. Undefeated master. Gosh, we're three we're three and oh with only an hour in. Maybe, maybe we're gonna have time to do four decks today. Maybe maybe we'll have time to play four decks today. We'll see. Need to be need to be done about one o'clock, otherwise the boss won't be happy. Now until one is five hours. Can finish two matches here. We'll see how the next two go. Humans, humans and teamer Delver could end up getting tied up in longer, longer matches. They could also get run over, so like. When was the last 5-0 on stream? I don't remember. I don't really keep track. I don't care about the match results. I mean, I don't care about our I don't care about our 3-2. I just want the matches to go quickly. Like if we if we 3-2, let's just like not 3-2 over the next hour. Let's like 3-2 in the next 30 minutes to 45 minutes. deck has a rancid tron matchup it's like i don't know i wouldn't call it like a favorite but i don't think it's unwinnable between spreading seas and stony silence and some counter spells here and there the the reach the reach is not irrelevant against tron either a lot of a lot of people have been electing to play aldrazi tron recently too which this deck's got a lot of reasonable tools in that matchup Yay! Someone else who elected to register Celestial Colonnade today. Bless you, bless you, opponent. We've got three Tef Free Time Ravelers in our main deck. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it and do it and do it and do it again. Do 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 Yeah, could be could be Phoenix. Could be Storm. Play a Burrell. T T T T. I don't think I mind playing against Phoenix. I think I have a lot of good tools for this matchup. What do you think? Why do you think Phoenix equates to Rip? What a what what about the matchup? Wow! Wow, Rip! That 
That's what it equates to. Yikes! Yikes! We were gonna be in such a good spot, chat. We were gonna bounce the thing. We were gonna bolt snap bolt the thing the following turn. And now we're dead. Aren't you glad we have Force of Will in this format to prevent combo decks from doing their thing? This card's so good against combo decks, like our, our deck that we're playing. It's a combo deck, right? That's why Force of Negation was really good against us, because our deck's a combo deck. <laughs> oh, magic. Hey, hey, listen. Like we said, I just said, I don't really care if we die. Let's just have it happen quickly. And my opponent's like, yo, dog, I got your back. I got your back, Jeff. Let's kill you quickly. All right, I don't necessarily know that they're on Phoenix, so I'm gonna wait on these rested pieces because rested piece does turn off our Snapcaster too. So I'm gonna I'm gonna wait on affirmation that they're that they're actually a Phoenix deck before I bring in the rips. Now I think Snap Helix blocked the thing as a playing to not lose line. I'd rather just play my can trips and try and hit the path to exile and get it off the table. And like be able to use my Snapcaster Mage for something better the following the following turn. I guess Grim Lava Mancer is not very good in this matchup either if they're Phoenix. Sure. So the fact the fact that there's a land on top of my deck that I want to draw here means I'm not gonna fetch on one. Listen, Burgle, I just register the cards they send me money to register, okay? I cut the third Geist. There were three originally. Oh, that's not Burgle. I just assumed it was Burgle ridiculing my Geist. <laughs> More than maple syrup. We can channel the spirit of Burgo. They're a Kiln Fiend deck. Interesting. Maybe I'm just supposed to bolt this here so I don't get Force of Negation again. I don't say yes or no to decks by you just telling me what their what their deck name is. If you want to know if I will play a deck, please take 30 seconds and fill out the form on my website. That was a bad fetch. I should have fetched a fetch that let me uh do both of these next turn. Are they gonna force the negation that untap kill me again? That would not be pretty. Would not would not be particularly beautiful. Uh we're three and oh, Chalky. Our opponent killed us in spectacular fashion in the previous game. This is just modern, so... I don't even know if I can call it modern. Standard, standard's almost identical to what modern is right now, and that everybody's just playing whatever they want, regardless of how good it is. So like, it's kind of just a this is magic thing, honestly. I mean, Geist of Saint Trash is looking pretty good here. It's gonna come down and close pretty quickly. 
Yeah, Tefri drew a card and then traded for a mountain and a lava dart. Seems pretty good. Dart Dart seems pretty sweet in their deck in general. It's two counters off a thing in the ice for one mana. Double double triggers the Kiln Fiend. So click plus bolt is actually lethal next turn, right? Just gonna go ahead and draw step this Mamma Jamma. I think they're not actually an Arclight Phoenix deck. Do you think do we think they have Arclight Phoenix is hiding in there? Do I want these surgicals? I kind of feel like I want these spell colors after seeing Kiln Fiend. Dovid's Veto doesn't seem particularly good. Do I leave the Surgicals as a hedge? Yeah, I mean, like, to a degree, Phoenix could make sense, right? But we also didn't see any Faithless Lootings, and they went through a good number of cards that game. I have paths and celestial purges. I'm gonna just board in the spell colors and cut the cut the surgicals here. Like what if they're what if they're on like thing in the ice, kiln fiend, phoenix is like their three threats, and then like the rest are lands and lands and non-creature spells. Fine. Not amazing, but fine. I'd like to draw uh, a Fetch or Shockland on one that makes white mana. Hey, IRL tag. Thank you for the support. I appreciate it. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Things are, things are running pretty good here today. We're going to practice. We're not, Mark. Today, this morning's all modern. I'm going to be done about 1 o'clock. Is this the, is this the game where we get Blood Moon and die? Feel like? Feel like this is the game where I'm about to get Blood Mooned? That's how modern works. Morning, Cajun guy. I don't, I don't have threes to trim, Thopter Gift. So, like, if you look at my sideboard, what cards are you expecting me to bring in to replace three mana spells, right? Like, I agree three mana spells are not great here, but sideboarding's not about having, cutting all the bad cards for you, right? It's like having the best of what you have access to. And like, what do I have access to over here that's like better than? Uh, I don't know. They decided not to put me on camera in round one of their last tournament, so I think they don't care. I don't know, that's not, that's not my job. I just, I just show up and play the tournament. I just surgical my path. Are we going to get lava darted and flip this thing over? But I'm glad I have Tefri and Attention Sphere in my hand. Two other ways to take this flip thing in the ice off the table. Well, I am going to elect to play Time Raveler first, so that way if they have a counterspell, this one's eating it. So they need two counterspells then. So, like, we're still at 20. So, like, when they flip this thing over next turn and we take 7, I'm going to 13. And then I can hopefully tag it with this Detention Sphere and not die. Uh, the Nerd Rage Gaming Championship Series is having two tournaments this weekend. One of their CT Trials and one that's a uh, Mythic Championship Qualifier. Is there any card that punishes me for playing this as a tapped land? I don't think so. Like, Spell Pierce is the one mana counter, and that still gets me even if I play Mountain. So this does four, five. So we could be dead this turn. 
I could have, like, Celestial Purge the Kiln Fiend and, like, flashed in Snapcaster Mage to jump block the 7-8. Maybe that's the more conservative line instead of potentially dying here. In a pretty okay spot here, unless we get Blood Moon. Uh, Force Spike is not Modern League All. Mana Tithe is, but Force Spike is not. I'm going to do this. If I could draw a land and play Geist. They do, they do still have a Lava Dart in their bin, so they can trade Lava Dart for Time Raveler here if they'd like. Which they probably do. Land. Nice. So do I click... And try and block this turn. That gets really savaged by a removal spell. So I guess I guess I'm just snapping bolt. And I'm snapping bolt as opposed to snapping celestial purge. Because snapping celestial purge, you get spell pierced. So bolt bolt's more flexible, but I'd like to play around pierce here, which they've shown us they have in their deck. Force of negation, pitching sleight of hand, they both lose to that. And I can't, I can't even play around that by doing it on their upkeep because on their upkeep, they'll have three mana up and they can just tap three and cast their Force of Negation. So, like, that doesn't even really work there. Getting, getting the two for one on the Force is, like, actually kind of ideal, all things considered. Resto's nice. It means if I draw an untapped land, I can Resto the Snapcaster Mage and Celestial Purge the Kiln Fiend. Little Tef is just kind of obnoxious. You don't need you don't need the for them quantifier on there. I'm gonna go ahead and pass with Queller up here. Queller slash Rusto. It's like not die by mistake. Uh, this was a just a standard donation, although the person did bump it up a good bit after to get it into today. And I actually don't mind playing decks like this. Like, I, like many players who play Modern, I really like playing decks like this. And we run into a bunch of random things that aren't like the stock best decks in Modern. You know, you get to win and they're fun. It's just like playing decks like this one against things like Dredge and Bridgevine is just like Misery Incarnate. Because your deck is just much worse than theirs. But like, when we play against things like Infect and Slivers and Blue Red Kiln Fiend, like... When our, when our lightning bolts are magic cards, we're happy, right? The problem is there's just too many matchups in modern where your lightning bolts aren't really magic cards. But again, like, this is just kind of why people have this idea that anything can win in modern is because, like, we're four matches into this league and we're 4-0, and oh, right? And I, we've yet to play against anything that I would consider, like, really a tiered deck. Because sometimes you take your brew and you show up and you play against five or six other brews and you're like, oh, right, this is great. And then like, you know, eventually you start hitting the decks that are really good and it feels worse. 
Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. This deck isn't bad. It's just the best decks are so much better for various reasons. Because it's just like the axes they're attacking on, right? And like, I have these surgicals and these rest in pieces to like, kind of cross my fingers and hope I hit my sideboard cards and like get a little bit lucky there. So like, I'm not 0% against the good decks, but like, those decks, what they're doing just feels like they're, it feels like they're playing a different game, right? Hey, Trax, thanks for the host. Hope you had a good stream this morning. And you said you weren't feeling too hot. Yeah, to a degree, Double E Hawk. Like I said, um, like, I, like I've talked about with regards to London Mulligans a few times now, I think a big part of why these decks are able to keep up with the best decks in the format is in large part due to the fact that Magic's an incredibly high variance game. So, like, there's a percentage of games where, like, your opponent mulligans to Oblivion or keeps a speculative hand on a scry and then doesn't do anything. So, like, the London Mulligan, I think, is going to likely increase the power level disparity disparity between a deck like this and a deck um and decks that are actually considered some of the better decks in the format because these decks these decks will get less free magic wins hey kinkle biter thanks for the 16 months i appreciate it welcome back yeah meat hooks is real bad meat hooks Like I, like I frequently said, at the end of the day, Magic's a game you should be playing for fun. So if you like playing decks like this and you like playing other things that aren't playing Faithful City and Ancient Strings, you know, follow your heart. You do, you do you. Sky's the limit, etc., etc. Right, we're 4 0 and getting dredged. Get to, get to find out how our sideboard cards are. So this is this is adorable. So this is our this is our first time getting to do this interaction. So yeah, so, so we're gonna we're gonna spell queller here, and I'm gonna play three mana Tefri and bounce my spell queller. And they don't get to recast their Stinkweed Imp, it just stays exiled. So if my if my opponent has a bad draw here, maybe we can get them. Their start their start isn't particularly fast here. So again, Tefri says you can only cast cards anytime you can cast a sorcery. So Spell Queller is asking your opponent to cast the spell while the trigger's on the stack, which normally ignores timing restrictions, except Tefri says, hey, you can't ignore this restriction because can't always beats you can. Hard cast creeping shell. That's that's the type of mediocre start that I need here. Oh geez, they. What are the odds they have a forest in their deck? Zero percent. It's like zero percent, right? Oh, righty then. All right, keep getting lucky. All right, all right. Like I said, they get. They get unlucky and magic happens. They get unlucky and magic happens. 
That's great. That's great. All right. We got five pieces of graveyard heat. Got a chip in a chair. We're halfway there. Oh, living on a prayer. Take my hand. We'll make it a swear. Oh, Put seven ley lights in your sideboard. So, uh, I think these come out. Um, this deck is like coming into a foot race, slightly overweight. If your opponent's shoes don't fit, you have a chance. <laughs> uh, what do I want my last cut to be here? Probably a Helix. Probably a Helix. No, I'm going to keep Helix to gain life. Am I? I need two cuts here. Time Raveler's a little slow. Resto's also a little slow. Do I want the third? Do I want the third Time Raveler or the third Helix? I think it might be the third Time Raveler. Especially if they're on Hogark, Hogak, whatever his name is. I think it's songs. Yeah, there you go. There's that. There's the list of songs. All right. Oh, pretty easy mulligan. No rip, no surgical. Surgical and Snapcaster made. Sign me up. I oh, let's go. I oh, let's go. Do 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 uh while three mana tefri is in play you, your opponent cannot recast the spell that's under spell queller all right so i don't think i want a surgical I don't think I want to surgical their looms. I think I'm just going after the prized amalgams and the blood gas. Pretty sure that's what I want to do. Because I can I can kill Narcomiba. So if they don't have a fetch land here, I'm gonna take these blood gas out. Let's pop this out so there's a misclick. All right, how do we sideboard? We've got two loams, a cathartic. Oh, they're gonna go kind of crazy this turn. We might actually die here. They brought in four nature's claims for the rest in pieces. They have one in their hand, notably. Yeah, we might we might actually get destroyed. Turn turn one surgical might still die. Actually, actually worth noting here, if I would have taken the loams, it would have paid off, but I can't know that. I just can't know that. Let's take a picture because it lasts longer. So they get to they get to cast cathartic reunion, ditch both looms, and then dredge three, dredge three, and then maybe dredge five if they're lucky. If they if they hit Narcomiba on these dredges, I'm probably dead. Yeah, they hit a stinkweed. Brick, brick, brick. And they hit. They hit a second amalgam here. I agree. I agree. I made the right play. Magic's a game where you're gonna frequently make the right play and still lose. Okay. Okie doke. So you're saying there's a chance. Take a chance on me. Do 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 do. Is 
They have all four creeping chills in the deck. Notably, my opponent only has one conflagrate in their deck right now. Is it crazy to surgical their lootings? Their hand doesn't really do anything at the moment, right? Or do I surgical their loams? They have a they have a stinkweed imp in their hand. They have plenty of lands. They only have one. If I take their lootings, I slow them down an incredible amount, right? Yeah, they have three Narco Amoebas, two prized amalgams. I think I'm gonna take I think I'm gonna take their looms. This might be wrong. Yeah, looms are only dredge card in the bin. They do have a they do have a stinkweed imp in their hand. I guess they have double looting. I'm gonna take their lootings actually. I'm not I'm not really sure that we're in a position to win this game. I mean, they only have one could flag. The problem is that, like, I'm going to die to just mediocre creature beats. It's part of, part of the issue. I'm not, I'm not sure that I can beat. The fact, the fact that I got both amalgams out on turn two was a big deal. Because, like, now they just get to, like, cast three threes and one twos and stuff like that. Like, I'm not really anywhere close to, like, being able to burn them out here. And, like, I'm mostly out of resources at this point. What are we doing? What are we doing, opponent? <sighs> Mostly loam, pick up like gemstone, blast zone, other stiff. problem the problem is while i can like kind of tread water and try not to die i don't have a good way to close the game out yeah geist geist has been very bad yeah I'm, i don't think i don't think this game's winnable i really just don't have lines to play through what they have going on I guess, I guess if I hit, like, my one of Ashiok there, I could have maybe been in the game. Because, like, it exiles their graveyard and then... It exiles their graveyard and mills them over. Like, is, is this even good enough? I'm not sure that it is. Because it's just slow.
It's like by the it's like three mana it's basically just gonna be three mana Tormod's crypt, huh? Which doesn't seem particularly good. All right, surgical into Ashiok might be okay. Do I want to nick their looms? To be fair, Stoneforge would actually be good against Dredge in these slow games. Yeah, surgical gives us a shot here. If I nick their loam and they have Cathartic Reunion, I end up really sad. They have like Cathartic Reunion plus another Dredger. If I don't Surgical and they hit multiple creatures into play, I'm going to have a hard time because my Ashiok doesn't get to live. I'm just going to go ahead and pass. And Batter Skull gets to keep remaking its Germ through... I'm going to take this Narcomoeba, hoping they can't Blood Gas this turn, because I just want to keep them off of Prized Amalgams, essentially. If you could take the Blood Gas Sweet. And the way, the way their hand lines up here, the way their hand lines up here, they can Cathartic Reunion and get Dredging this turn, but they can't put the Prized Amalgams into play because... Um, they can't put the prize amalgams into play because they don't have narco amoebas left that can blood gas takes the land. And then I'm going to be able to play Ashiok and nuke their graveyard. So that sounds great. Sure, Meso Cray. So, like, what you're doing there is, like, jumping to an illogical extreme and saying that we're saying Stoneforge Mystic is unbeatable for the Dredge deck. And that's not what we're saying. I'm just positing the point that, like, someone facetiously said was trying to make the, the, the joke that, like, Stoneforge Mystic wouldn't be good in this matchup. And I'm not saying it's unbeatable, but I am saying that, like, it's a playable card that you would be happy to have. So there's, there's a lot of room between this card's unbeatable and this card is bad, right? And that's, the reality is that most cards end up somewhere in that middle ground. All right, Ashiok, do your stuff. This card's not very good in standard, but it seems very reasonable in modern. You cannot surgical a dredge, a dredge card as they choose to dredge it. Dredge, dredging is a replacement effect, which means when you go to draw, you dredge instead. Once your opponent declares they're dredging, you cannot interact with it. Did they just fetch and then fail to find? I think they were, maybe they were searching for an answer. All right, well, we hit the Hawaii 5 on the back of ripping a surgical into an Ashiok, so... Yeah! Clearly, clearly the deck's perfect, and we're perfect. Oh, they can't fetch, we have Ashiok! <laughs> That's great. That card, these, these Planeswalkers and their, their tricky static abilities. These... These planeswalkers and their tricky static abilities. That's that's funny. We did we did five o. Now when someone asks what was the last time we five o'd, I can say today. All right. So um, I mean, like like I said, these kind of we've played decks like this before, and they're fine when you hit reasonable matchups when you run really good against decks like Dredge. Um. This card is just consistently bad when we play it, and it's not something that I would play again, believe it or not. So I think what I would do is I would cut all of the guys, and I would slide another spreading season here, and then I would either play a third click or a second resto. Second resto is probably fine. The fact that you can, the fact that you can resto spell queller while Tefri is out to catch another spell is really sweet. I also like that Spreading Seas has some synergy with Tefri, and that if you go turn two Spreading Seas, 
turn three bounce your spreading seas tefri's down tick effectively has drawn two cards there which seems sweet and then moving the third spreading seas to the main deck kind of opens up another another sideboard slot so you could put another card in here or something i kind of felt like the way the sideboard ended up i was like one card short in the creature matchup so maybe maybe another piece of removal in the sideboard here wouldn't be unreasonable like the last helix or something something along those lines i could i could see being fine when did we last three two hold on we're probably gonna three two here in about 30 seconds so uh i guess i'll throw one more card in here on the sideboards so that when people want to grab the list at the end i'll have have my current what's a what's a random kill target creature spell that we can put in the board burst lightning burst light let's just play burst lightning Big, big, big fan of Reach. Yeah, I can see a Braid being okay. A Braid kills artifacts? Sure, let's make it in a Braid. I like a Braid. Big, big fan of killing and staring bridge. Verdict. No, I don't really want Verdict in my spell color deck, I don't think. Let's do that. Kitchen Binks is kind of whatever. Felt like I had too many threes in the creature matchups. I like that idea. Hey, Grigachu. Thanks for the 13 months. I appreciate that. Welcome.